All right, guys, I'm here with Michael Curry, the winner of the 1,000-player region. Was it regional or treasure cup? Uh, regionals. Regional, and he got so with Katakuri. He is the number one yellow player in the world. And uh, talk to us a little bit about you, Michael. Well, I started playing Kata since OPO3. <laughs> okay, and free. it was just one of my favorite decks. I've topped a total of five tournaments with Katakuri and one tournament with Anel. So, big on to playing yellow. And yeah, got first place in the Carter Magica Regionals last week, and that was quite a blast. Yeah, what were your matchups for that tournament, do you know? I versed four Sakazukis, three Gekko Moyas, two Yamatos, and one Mirror matchup. Okay. And uh, your deck list, I'm going to put it on the screen, um, you know, and edit it into the video, but do you want to talk about, like, why you chose certain cards? Um, I don't remember if you were playing Onami or not. No, so I think my list is, for the most part, very generic. Some people run four of the seven drop big moms. I opted for three seven drops and the eight drop Katakuri. But the reason I did that is just because I was playing a few friends who were playing Fortress Yamato. And honestly, the matchup felt really rough if I didn't have the eight cost. I was, so that's why I tacked that one in. I was telling people about that too. I was like, you might... I was like, category players might want to consider. I know you're going to have one or two less triggers, but you might want to consider playing that category because there's so many decks that are playing like the wall kind of version now. You know, Uta, if you run into that, Yamato, um, you know, there's a lot of decks that are running that these days. And obviously, if you run into like a like kid or something like that, they're probably going to play it too. So do you find that like one is enough? You said you only played one? I'm thinking of changing the ratios a bit more. I only played one for the regionals, but... I saw two Fortress Yamatos, and then it came in clutch when I was versing a Sakazuki to put their Gekko Mori back into life. It buyed me enough time to hit my 10 drop and play a bit out. So why, okay, so I want to take the time for you to put me in my place here. I have constantly okay. said that yellow doesn't take a whole lot of skill, but you seem to be doing well pretty much every tournament with yellow considering it is, in my opinion, a more luck-based deck. So, am, am I smoking crack? Tell me why I'm wrong. How are you doing so good with this deck all the time? So, I don't disagree with that. Kata has a lot of luck RNG, right? But I think it's how you're able to utilize looking into your own life, knowing which triggers you're about to pull out, and playing very efficiently with those. I usually try thinking that... I try playing the game as if I have 0 to 2 triggers at most, so if I do have a trigger, I can play a bit differently, and then play a little more to my strengths. So I think the big difference is how people use triggers, and then how they're playing the matchups. Some people only play on curve and just play very generically and very one-sided, but I think that's not the best way to play all the time. And um, what do you mean how, how you use triggers efficiently? Like, are you like, you know, if you see like, for example, a cracker they might have removal for that cracker right now, so you put it at the bottom of your life? Like, what, what do you mean by using them efficiently? I mean, just knowing when to take the hits. So, example, if you're reversing a Sakazuki, if you take the hit too early and not counter out of that one, then they're probably just going to bottom deck it as it is. But if you wait for the last swing, usually you can get that out and then play it where they have no answer towards it. And it also comes down to how you swing. If you're still playing on curve... And just a few things like that. Okay. Okay. And how do you feel about Cat right now? Do you think it's better than it ever has been? Like, like, are you, like, just, like, jonesing to get into more regionals? Because, I mean, it feels like, like, it feels right now, like, pretty unbeatable sometimes. So, like, is this, how, ma how many serial cards do you expect to win in this meta right now? I mean, I'll be honest. Coming into the first match, I was still very shaky. Because being a new meta and not having a good amount of practice means I was very unsure of the matchups. It ended up going really well for me, so I hope <laughs> I can get another serial this weekend. And you're playing, uh, what's this weekend? Oh, it's um, uh, uh, PPG. two regionals back-to-back. -back. I forgot which ones they are. There's PPG one on Easter. I actually signed up for the wait list on that one because I didn't even know about it. Um, but next, oh, okay. next week, there's a, a one in Virginia I'm actually going to go to. Um it's like a like a test regional, but it has all the same pricing. 
so even oh, even better odds yeah yeah so apparently it's like <laughs> a yeah there's like they captured like 350 players or something like that um so like they're doing like a more like a local like this is where they're integrating like the local scene more and like allowing like local yeah. stores to host regional so they're testing it out with with uh, virginia so i'm gonna go over there and see if i can uh if i can uh you know dice people up over there with uh with, with my soccer <laughs> so what do you think your hardest matchup is i definitely think it's sakazuki really i think sakazuki if they see what they need and they are be able to Basically, bottom bear could clear my board while having blockers up. Even with Reject and Amaru, it could still get very hard to get through that. That's so funny, because I interviewed... Uh, do you know who Cody Angeloff is? Unfortunately, no. Oh, okay, he's he uh, he got top 8 at uh, Nats. He's just, he's just a really good player overall. Um, yeah. But he was telling me that his freest matchup is, like, Katakuri. Like, he was like, I would love to play Kat. But I, like for me, I'm scared of cat. Every time I sit across the table for it, I'm like, they're just gonna trigger into everything, and I'm gonna die. Like what? So like, that's crazy. So your your hardest matchup is is Sokka, but you beat four of them. You said at the regional. Yeah, yeah. I I've learned to play against them, but I still think it's very tough if they see everything they need to, and I don't. Okay, and so you think this version of Sokka is better into cat than last like than last uh, format Sokka? Yes, just. Gekko Mori is such a value card that it makes it really tough. Especially like, if they get, like, Kuzan out of it, right? Yeah, Kuzan and uh, Brand New just refills their hand, and it makes it hard to judge if they have the counters or not at that point. How often do people rage against you when you play Yellow? <laughs> at my locals, not so much. On the Sim and online, a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that that's justified, or you're like, what the hell, man? Because I will say, you're one of the coolest yellow players that I've ever met. Oh, I appreciate that. But yeah. Honestly, I don't know about justification for it, but I think it's kind of funny in my opinion. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've raged against some people on the on the rank simulator when they like, tr like, like last night, some dude triggered like four cards, like the back to back to save him. Like he had like, like the zero cost event into like Sanji. And then he had like 22 Ks in the hand. I'm like, how is that even possible? Like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's some. I'll be honest, playing against Kata does feel like a really bullshit matchup sometimes, <laughs> but it does come down into tempoing a lot as well. Because if they trigger one card and you can get rid of it, then you just kind of like hold off with blockers until late game. It's not the worst, but it's it, it's still pretty rough. Do you like when people trash their own life when, with seven costs with Big Mom, or do you want them to give you one? Uh, I think that's very dependent on the matchup. I think both provides me of different benefits. If they trash, that means they have less. They will have less cards in hand, and I can go a little more aggressive to for lethal. If they gain, I feel safer playing more seven drops or playing my ten drop at that point. Hmm. Now, I I told people whenever I coach them that like on the turn where like you're gonna play, and I could be wrong because I don't play yellow, but on the turn where I if you're playing against a deck with heavy removal, the turn where you were are going to play like a, a four drop with like your five or six dawn turn, um, I think a lot of times it's better depending on the situation to just go like heavy aggro with those two cards that you have on board, like leader and like, let's say like a cracker or a paro and put down, put like them down to like one life or like even two life, but they have to discard like two or three cards to get out of that that second attack. Do you think that that's like a good strategy with like some of these decks that have heavy removal, you know, cause rather than just attacking for six and seven, you know, now you're, you know, doing a ton of damage and then they're just going to kill that card that you play anyway. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And that has been some of the plays I've made against, especially against Sakazuki where instead of playing an on curve, sometimes I'll just swing both units as hard as possible. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm, I'm happy that you said that. Cause like sometimes <laughs> I'll coach people and like, like on yellow and I don't play yellow and I'm like, I think this is right. Cause this is what I hate when they do to me, but I don't know. Like you're, you're obviously the yellow goat you said. So I don't think we, I don't think we said it in the beginning of the video, but you have six overall, like what is it? Top 16s or top eights or what is that? I have, well, one's a bit iffy cause I bubbled out, but I have six top or five top eights. And then one of them was a top nine. Oh dude. That's yeah, crazy. That, I, I was a bit upset for the bubbling out, but. It happens to at least one or two people in 
the original assault. I think they should. I think everyone that goes X one should get a serial card because like it's always that there's always ten people that go either uh, there's one guy that's undefeated and then there's nine X ones most of the time, which really sucks. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I really wish they implemented that kind of system because going X one and then bubbling out simply just because of who you versed from luck doesn't feel that great. I will say that I did feel pretty good whenever it, so when we both got our top eight at the uh, the treasure cup when I played crocodile and you played cat, yeah. the ninth place player was a Nami player and I was like yeah <laughs> I like we like we like knocked him out. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, yeah. Nami is a Nami is a very solitaire kind of deck, which I don't blame people for playing. Personally, I don't like like if it's not ranked or regionals i don't usually like to play against them on sim oh i, it, I it won't feels play against one for me yeah if i see a nami i'll just quit instantly <laughs> 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 like, like you got it bro like i'd rather just i'd rather lose mmr than like waste my time you know what i'm saying yeah it just feels very like you're both playing two different types of games i just don't find that too fun yeah so for you you're more of a kata fan right so why why do you play yellow is it like do you like the life gain? Do you like like the casino kind of style? Like, what is it about yellow that kind of that synergizes with you? So originally, it was basically just because I liked Kata as a character in the anime. Yeah. So that's always one of the, my main reasons for picking up deck. So that's the reason why I was trying to pick up Perona, but I still need to get more practice on that deck. Also, yeah, that I deck, like Kata. Hmm? I was gonna say that deck, like when it goes first, it just like crumbles <laughs> like that yeah deck it does not go feel first. good <laughs> you're like always like a turn behind <laughs> yeah i like kata just because he was very simple to pick up he had cards that just made sense to me and like especially playing in like 10 rounds of tournaments so like 10 hours especially when they drag on i didn't want to play decks like sakazuki or decks where like i'll get faulted for making up mistakes later on for being tired and then I've gotten down Kata to a T at this point where I can play him pretty proficiently and regardless of how tired I am, I can just play him almost autopiloted. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah. I, I will say, like, so I got top 32 at the uh, the Treasure Cup in set five. I haven't played in a set six tournaments yet. But yeah. um, after that was the nine-round tournament, I went X2. Um, and I was playing Sokka. My brain, like, I actually, like, just passed out on my on my bed. Like, I was so tired. Like... <laughs> it's like when you're thinking all the time like every decision matters especially because i played like five mirror matches that day too so like i played literally five sakazukis and like four purple luffies or maybe like four sakazukis five purple luffies i don't remember but like yeah like when you're just like constantly like thinking about like every possible situation what do i cycle what do i do this like that shit hurts your head bro <laughs> like it's a lot no, of fatigue i agree, I agree. like i played sakazuki i can play it decently for four to five rounds but after that my i get a little shaky and start making small mistakes you know what's really funny is i have a dude <laughs> i have a dude at my locals who plays who plays cat and he, he told me the other day he was like while you're over here thinking about everything i'm thinking <laughs> like what is this trigger that i have <laughs> coming up i wonder what this could be and it's like it's like uh you know that meme where it's like that guy like you know like pointing at you and then the other guy's like buff as fuck like just smiling that's what it feels like. Yeah. It's it's like I'm like doing like all these like combinations and you're like trigger play this card. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I do think to a certain extent Kata's a very easy deck to pick up and play. But I think to get to a very competitive, there's a lot more decision to be made on how you temper the game. No, I I, de I definitely think that like for you, I was talking to Cody as well. Like for people that like do well consistently like you like you did you got you you got bubbled out of nats right you said you got like 66 or something like that yeah i i bubbled out of nats going eight and two and then bubbling to 66 that sucks man but i, I do think like there's no i never take away anyone that like does well consistently especially like someone like you like you have like you said like more so a luck based deck and you're consistently doing well with it so obviously at some point it isn't luck right same with Jonas, right like Jonas um obviously won nats and then did uh has done very well at previous tournaments before and i'm pretty sure he plays like a yellow main as well like a, like there is a good portion of it that comes down to luck but there's also like the skill factor which like i believe that you like you said could probably play any deck like really well um yeah 
just because like you have like that knowledge of like the game. So um, is there something besides the triggers that we talked about? I asked Cody about this as well. Is there something that you really excel at like as a player, like something that you think you do really, really good uh, with? I think for me, I play, I understand a lot of like how people will play. And then I try playing around that turns before if I can. So I can assume, especially with Sakazuki's, for the most part, I believe I know what they're going to try doing. And if they have the cards to do worst case scenario, I have to play around that. So, for example, in the semifinals for the last online regionals, my board was looking good. My board had a 7-drop Mom, it had Paris Peros, and I think he only had 2 to 3 cards in hand, and I believe 2 blockers. So... He was able to bottom deck both of those with just three cards, and that was my worst case scenario. Jesus. So it got very rough, and I had to basically stall out the game where I can build up my board again and not take lethal damage. Okay, so you're good at like recognizing a lot of times like uh, when when to like play more safe, when to like be aggressive. Like that's kind of what you what you think right there. Yeah, I think I can tempo really well and play reactively. And that's what Cody said as well. Um, I just posted the uh, interview today. So if you guys are watching this, go check that out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he said that like he's really good at like taking things and like being very adaptable. So like, for example, yeah. if someone counters or if they don't counter, like that changes like what he's going to do. Um, I'm, I'm actually the same way. Like I I tell everyone like low down commitment, right? Like don't decide you're going to make a play and then they like take a life that you don't expect them to take and you're like oh shit like i could have gone for game right there you know or i could have cleared board or something like that yeah no 100 percent. i agree with that i feel like there's so many plays that kata can make which it they're like it's not a crazy combo deck like others but there's a lot of decisions to be made while playing the deck what do you think so those everything decisions you are? do well it depends on going lethal clearing boards uh playing out your big drops or playing a bunch of smaller drops there's also playing aggressive and safe, and I think those are very hard decisions to make, especially later on in the game when both players are at their end game. Yeah. Because one mistake can lead to you losing the game. One wrong swing can also mean you lose. No, I, I, I completely agree. I think, too, I was, co I was coaching somebody on, um, on Kata the other day, and I was like, some, like, Kata Curry, they're usually always on a clock, but you're not really on a clock. So, like, if you get to the grind game, a lot of times, like, you can actually, like, grind better than most decks, except for, like, Sakazuki or, like, maybe Gecko. But, like, you can grind better than most decks because all of your cards, like, individually are, like, heavily impactful. You know, 10-cost Big Mom obviously is huge. 7-cost Big Mom, yeah. depending on the situation, is huge. Obviously, like, your triggers can, like, take over a game as well as, like, your your finishing cards, Amaru uh, Reject. So, like, I do think that, like, you do have to know, like, as if you're going to be a good yellow player, you do have to know, like, at the highest, at the highest, like, level, okay, I need to clear his board so I can, like, drop these, like, big moms safe. Like, you have four big moms in hand. Like, you can't, you can't just, like, rush him down because, like, you need your big moms one to trash his life. So that's when you go for board or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. I like that. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you think, think about, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think also a really big thing is, I'm also making a deckless video of this, but I believe what you trash for triggers as well is super important. I think knowing what you're going, what you're trashing to play a trigger out, can decide on how you're playing the game and what your opponents are trying to do to you. I've seen so many people trash like two K counters to like play characters, and I'm like, oh, I would not do that. Like that is not <laughs> what I would do. Is that something you do often, or you trash like something else? I generally don't like to trash 2Ks because they're very sparse in the deck. I believe I only have 12 2Ks. But during the online regionals, there has been some There's been a few cases where I did have to trash a 2K. It feels terrible doing it, though, especially if it like the triggers like Satori. <laughs> you like trash a 2K to play a 2K. You're like, oh, my God, bro. Yeah, at, at that situation, it's, it's very rough because now the opponent knows you probably have minimal 2Ks in hand. Or like you have all 2Ks in hand. Oh, you have all two Ks. Yeah, cause, you know, like, he has to trash something, you know. Um, I wanted to ask you, so, like, when you played a Nell, you just played a Nell because, like, it was it was yellow. So, like, next set, a Nell gets, like, insane with, like, the new ace. Are you, are you going to stick to Cat to have, like, that, you know, to still have, like, the 
you know, 10 cost big mom, or do you kind of want to try out a Nell with like four Yamato, four ace, and then obviously like four Katakuri? I'm undecided at the moment. I usually don't take too much of a look into the next set until closer to release. So I'm not exactly sure what Anel is running nowadays or what is he playing against. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I usually don't do that either. I don't know if you... um VV Theory is, is another YouTuber. He's one of my friends. This dude, like... Like, before one set releases, he's already playing, like, the next set. Like, he's, like... Like, when oh, right. like right now, like, like he's probably playing, like, OPO 8. <laughs> like, this dude's, like, oh, on another level, bro. Um, yeah, I uh, I wanted to ask you, too, if there's... I asked Cody this as well, but is there any mistakes you see a lot of people make, like, playing into Katakuri? Or just in general, like, just... Like, is there something you notice, like, people at the highest levels of, like, tournaments? Like, is are there mistakes that you notice that they make that you're, like, what are you... Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, like why are you doing that? I think a big mistake is when they're trying to counter out of swings that are less important. And then when they're playing too aggressively where it has no benefits for them to play aggressively like that. Like, during a few tournaments, I've seen people try to end me in game when I had seven cards in hand because they thought they have no other way out. That makes sense. Which, I get it if you have no other way out, but chances are you're not going to win and getting through all seven cards from hand if you're swinging fives and sevens. Also, like, one trigger, like, that stops an attack and you're done. Exactly. And I feel like they got to play around. They have to play around triggers, unfortunately, as it is. I understand that triggers are a really strong mechanic that's like, you can get punished for trying to go for lethal. Do you, um, I actually said that in a, um, in a strong, in strongest wizard interviewed me at Nats and he was like, do you think triggers are bad for the game? And I was like, yeah, definitely. So I don't, <laughs> I don't think, I, okay. So let me, let me ask you about this. Cause I've been, I've, I've been kind of throwing this idea out there Two two different ideas. The first one is I don't think trigger bodies should exist. Like Okiku, Cracker, Paro, Sanji, um, maybe like Bru like Brulee I'd be okay with. And like Shirahoshi I'd be okay with like more so like yeah. defensive triggers and but like i'm all for like beige amaru the zero cost event like i'm i'm okay with triggers like that because it like basically like just just a mechanic to like stall out the game a little bit longer but like trigger bodies and defensive bodies in the same time i feel like they're just too much what what do you think that like they're a little bit like busted and like would would do you think that it would be more fair for them to just have one or the other i personally don't think it's crazily busted I do think, for however, Okiku especially is busted. I think <laughs> us having to trash a card from hand to at least play out the character to minimize our hand size is a fair trade-off to some extent. Okiku to just be played for free is kind of broken, and but, it gains a life too. Like if it was like a three, a if it was a three-four with that effect, I'd be like, all right, like that's that's fair, you know, because you have to put a dot yeah. on it. You know, I can ignore it. It's hard to ignore a four six, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like what am I supposed to do? Like, especially that like, comes out like early on, like you know, because you take us against the Sakazuki, we're at three life pretty much the first turn. So what are we gonna yeah. ignore it for like <laughs> ten turns in a row while we're trying to kill you? Yeah, but like triggers exist in yellow, at the same way as I see Sakazuki having natural filter and being able to like bottom deck or KO everything. Obviously, it does take a lot more for Sakazuki to be able to bottom deck and KO stuff. But the fact that they can clear their bo my board when I haven't even swung with a unit is really strong as well. No, definitely. I definitely think... So, like, I was okay. I, I, I wasn't okay with Sokka, the leader, being banned. But I was telling everyone, like, if we have Houndblaze and Rebecca that are banned or put to one, Sakazuki's strength, like, completely, like, is completely hindered. Because, yeah. like... Because Houndblaze is massive. Obviously, they just printed the new, like, the two-cost event, the the one that bottom decks two cards now. That's really good. But, like, Houndblaze yeah. was a big problem. Uh, obviously, Rebecca was a big problem. Now, Gecko, obviously, is huge. But you can't really ban Gecko because it just is so good in so many decks. Like, it yeah. hurt. It, like, Unfortunately, it, it's at a point where you can't ban it. Yeah, like, it hurts, like, too many decks to ban it at this point. Um, my next thing I wanted to ask you was, what do you feel of, like, I feel like limiting triggers to, like, 20 per deck would be, like, I think that would be pretty a pretty good idea too. Would that just kill yellow? You think? Limiting. I don't think it would kill yellow. It would make it a bit. It would make it weaker, especially because the events would count into that. But I think there are different variations of yellow you could play that are less strong but still as good. Okay. I um. 
I, I think Anel next set gets so tanky that it's hard to imagine playing any, like, bro, like, it feels like Anel can literally just take so much life and just, like, plus off of it. And it feels like now that it has, like, so many options to, like, not only it has a rush character, like a 10-10 rush that gains a life, but it has, like, the Yamato that can pop something or just obviously heal on its own. It, feel, it feels like that deck can just never die. And that's why I'm like, yo, like, I'm okay with them never dying, but, like, if I'm trying to pierce into their life every turn and they're just, like, playing bodies on top of healing it back, like, that feels, like, so, un, like, unsurmountable. You know, like even ten cost big mom, I feel like can't kill that deck sometimes. Yeah, I I don't know about next set, but I know during OPO four, Anel felt pretty busted. Or, or sorry, OPO five. My apologies. Yeah, but yeah, it, it felt like it was worse than Kata. At least Kata, usually when a life is hit, you're not just regening it for free by leader bullet every turn. You you have to play your seven drops or your ten drops. But Anel just felt like he would just play whatever and it just couldn't get through <laughs> yeah i was uh, coaching somebody on that and like they kept countering when they were at like one life or even like two life and i was like no 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 no, you never <laughs> counter a single attack ever until you get to the point where like they can maybe put you at zero and even then if you have a yamato you just let them put you at zero and you get the free cycle like oh man bro like it's it's crazy bro it could just like survive everything yeah no i know anel's a pretty strong card for sure what do you think about when I read the leader build the first time? I was like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, when I read that, I was like, that seems like it could be pretty good, but I wasn't taking I wasn't uh I wasn't taking into the account like how well people would play Anel. Like, if people are bad with Anel, it's easily killable. But like if like yeah. your yourself, Jonas, uh I don't really know a whole lot of like high level yellow players, like other than you two. Um <laughs> but uh I'm sure there are, I just I just don't know them. Like I don't know Jonas personally either. I just kind of like, like seen his videos, but um, like when you guys play that and like you're smart and like you like save your counters and like you save like removal and like, you know, you like, you like keep putting stuff back on your life rather than giving me life. It feels like, damn, like this, these dudes just got it. Like these dudes just got it figured out. Like, like it, like that's, that's tough, man. Like when a, when a, when a lucky deck meets a good player, that, yeah. feel, that feels unbeatable, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree 100% of that. There are a lot of times where a Kata does break, but, like, if I can get lucky and I can play it really well, it does feel pretty dim. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like, if I, like, when I played against you with uh, Crocodile, I don't, I didn't, like, uh, like, I don't, I didn't think that matchup was favored for me at all, but, like, the way you played it, I was like, dog, like, he just has the answers. <laughs> 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 I couldn't, I couldn't beat it. Yeah, thankfully one of my players at locals played a lot of Croc before that regionals, so me and him would just run games. That's why I decided to go first in that matchup as well. I think. Yeah. If I won the dice roll. I think you did. Yeah. Which was still like, yeah. yeah, that's like the the like how you beat Croc. There's a white beard player that did that too. They're like, I'll go first. I was like, Are you sure? <laughs> 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 what do you think about the meta game right now? What do you think? Uh, what do you think about like the whole? Do you think it's a triangle format, or do you think there's like seven decks that can compete right now? Like, like I think there are. I think. Let me think about this real quick. So the Sakazuki, Gecko, Kata. I think I want to say Prona has a place because I love that deck. I also but think it so. does feel a bit underwhelming. It feels underwhelming else. only because Katakuri is so good into Perona. That's the yeah. only thing I like when I put Perona in the S tier, I said Perona has a fantastic matchup into a lot of these decks, like Gecko. It like destroys Gecko. And then it can definitely beat Sokka. And then, obviously, like, you know, Uta has a good matchup into, Red Purple Law has a good matchup into, so it has, like, good matchups. But, like, Kat, and also is good into Anel, too. But Kata, bro, like, destroys Uta, bro. I don't get it, man. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, it's a bit of an uphill battle for that one, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I said Uta, but I meant, uh, I meant Perona. Perona, um, So, so, when you're playing in these regionals... What do you not? I know you don't want to see Sokka, or like you you said Sokka is your worst matchup. But what do you like not want to see? Like when you like sit across the table from someone, and they like drop down this leader, you're like, "Fuck!" Like this is gonna be a long one. Honestly, I hate the mirror matchup more than anything. Really? Not because it's tough. I think I know how to play against another cat really well, but I find it very boring. I that's the one thing I don't like about most mirror matchups. 
Like, in the regionals, I enjoy it and I play well, because it's a lot of fun to me. Like, the last two, especially the semifinals and finals match, were such a tight game that I find it very excited and fun. Whereas a Katamira matchup feels very boring to me, so I don't really like seeing that matchup. See, I usually like playing mirror matches. The only mirror match I don't like playing is Sokka, though. Because it feels like Sokka, it's like, if they have the removal and you don't, you're like, damn. But, like, you know, when I played uh, Crocodile Mirrors or, like, Gecko Moria Mirrors, I think Perona's also a shit. I hate the Perona Mirror. That's, like, the worst in the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, most most Mirrors are fun. I actually really like the Cat Mirror when I played Cat in set 3. Like, I thought that was, like, a more, like, skill-intensive, like, you know, when do I take life, when do I block, like, type thing. I like I like the Cat the cat Mirror a lot. Why don't, why don't you like it? You said it's boring, but, like, I mean, there's a lot of interaction that you can do, no? There is. I just... I don't, I don't know. I just don't find most mirror matchups fun. I like having my player style just be my own, and then opponents having a different one and seeing the clash between the two different play styles. Hmm. Where, especially against another good Kato, it's very similar to the play style. So I don't find it as exciting. That's fair. Did you come from other card games, or is this your first one? Uh, this is my first one. That's pretty impressive. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, like, that's pretty impressive. I, um... I I played card games pretty much my whole life on and off like Yu-Gi-Oh, Hearthstone, a little bit of Pokemon and Magic, and um, a lot of people that I coach like come from um, either from years and years of card games or none at all. It's like there's like no in between. It's like yeah, I played this for a little bit. How how I mean obviously since you've seen so much success, it it came naturally to you. But like, how did you know you were good at this game? Honestly. I want to. I would want to thank my locals, to be honest. They're the ones that helped me grow into this game and get better in it as a player. Before I was, like OP one, OP two is when I started. I was a really bad player. <laughs> I would. I I had a really bad start because I didn't understand the rules as well at the start. So before I used to trash my life every time they would take it. Wait, what? And I was like, this game kind of sucks. I don't. Why? Why is my hand size so small? You would trash your life every time they would take what? Yeah, when I was starting with the game out, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, playing against them, there they were some really good players at my locals, and they're very kind, very nice people there. So it helped me enjoy the game more. It helped me grow as a player. So I want to thank all of them, especially. That's good, man. I think a, I think a good local scene really does make a difference because I was like you, like when I first started playing the game, I was pretty awful at the game. Um, it also didn't help. I was playing Blurple Crocodile in set one. <laughs> And, like, that was not meta at all. So I was just, like, losing games. But there's a couple players that, like, are that were better than me and are still really good um, and are playing at high levels. Uh, my buddy has them. Uh, my friend Matt. Like, those are, like, the two people I kept asking, like, all these questions to. I was like, what, like, what am I doing wrong here? Like, how do I, like, how am I losing these games? And, like, through them, like, kind of, like, giving me these little tidbits here and there and, like, never made, they never made me feel, like, stupid. Like, I got so much better, like, thanks to them at my local scene. Like, you know, if, if they weren't there, I would have never known, like, half the stuff that I know now. Or it would have taken me a long time to kind of figure that out. Yeah, no, I agree 100% with that. I'm, a, I'm one of the part of the lucky few that has a very nice locals. It's not, like, a super competitive one that I hear a lot are. But it's very family-orientated, it feels like. Okay. Ours is a mix. It's, like, competitive, but, like depending on which because we have so many different game stores here in, in florida like depending on which one you go to it's like either uber casual or like uber competitive <laughs> there's like barely an in-between no that's fair i uh yeah. huh what were you gonna say oh no no go ahead go ahead i was gonna say um i don't have too much time left but i wanted to ask you a couple more questions um when you're playing these games right like is there ever is there ever like a read that you can like that you make on your opponent like is there something that they normally do that tells you like they're losing the game like are you good at reading like body language or like do they like tell you based on like i don't know like something they discard like what, what do you think about that i do think what they discard is a big tell of what they're trying to play and what they're trying to accomplish given Sometimes you verse very bad players that kind of confuse me of what they're trying to do. Because <laughs> they're just discarding cards out of random. I'm like, huh. Yeah. I don't, I can't actually read this guy. I've, I've played against people like that before where it's like, um, it's like, 
I don't know if they're good or bad, especially when I first play them. Like, especially yeah. like on like a webcam regional, and they'll be doing like all this like confusing shit, and I'll be like, "What is like this guy's just on another level? Like, I like is he like dude? Is he like mind gaming me here?" And then they'll lose. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, am I the bad one or is it like? Is he just like mind playing me so much? Right Bro, now? swear to God, there's a dude I played like I want to say it was like round four or round five. It was the soccer mirror in the last big tournament I played in, and he was just doing like all this weird shit, and I was like. This guy's 4 and 0 right now just like me and <laughs> like he must be doing something right but then he like lost and I was like he lost he lost by like a lot and I was like what the fuck like that was the weirdest <laughs> game I've ever played yeah yeah you definitely get some of those games once in a while <laughs> I wanted to ask you too like um how do you practice like like do you um do you have people that like you play online or like is there like a trusted person that you like go to 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 kind of like get those reps in yeah, there's a few people I really like playing with and my locals, because I do think their insight's very good. They do top quite a bit. I'm surprised they don't top more, because they're actually genuinely really good and smart players. Yeah. But I usually go to them to run some sim and just get some advice on the matchups and what they think. That's interesting. And when, whenever you play with them, do you play, like, with an open hand, or do you just, like, talk about, like, do you just play like it's, like, a like a tournament? like, Or do you're like, okay, this is what you should do here, or what do you think I should do here? Like, what 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 do you, what do you ask them? Usually, we'll run it as normal, but then for, usually the last few decisions are the big ones, so we just run it back with an open hand and open life. Okay. Is there? So a, then we decide of what's the best course of action we could have done. Is there? A, so I do something similar. Like I play with my I play with like a couple of buddies of mine that um, they don't play at a whole lot of tournaments, but like I know that they're good players, so like I trust their decisions. But like we'll play like a bunch of games, and then like towards the towards the end. Like, maybe even after the game, I'm like, I don't understand, like, how to, how, like, in this situation, like, how do I get out of this? Or, like, what's the best route? And we'll talk about that, and then in the next game, we'll try it out. And, like, we'll alternate, obviously, going first or second. That's a lot of times how, how I practice. Um, yeah. I definitely... It's pretty close to that as well. Yeah, like, I, I definitely think that, like, it's it's really interesting, too, though, that, that you said that, like, the people at your locals that you play, you trust their insight, but they don't top as much as they should. There's a guy... Yeah that I actually coach sometimes. His name is Ryan. I love this guy to death. Super cool dude. And he's like one of the like top rated players on the rank simulator. Like his like MMR is like in like the 2800s or something like that, which is like very, very high. Yeah. And for me, I cannot play on the rank simulator. Like something about it, like I'm just terrible on it. So like my MMR is never that high. But like I'll play this guy at locals and like a lot of times I'll beat him. It's, it's always like a really close game, but I'll beat him. But he won't like he's only played in two regionals so far and hasn't done well, like hasn't done like the like what I think he should do in both the regionals. Like like I think this guy can get can win any regional, like at any time. And he hasn't done that. Why do you think that is? Or not just him in particular, but like with people at your locals too? That I, I can't say for sure. I honestly don't know. But yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> I don't know. Because I do think to a T, they are a better player than me, and sometimes I do feel that way. So that's why I have grown a respect for them on their insight and how they play, what they play, and like that's why I trust their opinions because I feel like they're a like a, a quite a better player. They think a lot more. I think sometimes they get in their own head too. Like, uh, for example, the guy the guy that I was talk talking to you about in my locals, like this guy is like I'm telling you, like this guy is so good. Like he's he's ridiculously good, and like he'll like get in these situations where like it's so obvious that like he knows the answer and he'll just like botch it. And I'm like, no bro, you're way better than that, bro. Like you have to like, Oh, like there's a, re a replay he showed me one time on the simulator. He was playing against, um, uh, Jackson Huang, uh, the guy that got third at worlds. Yeah. And he like, he had like two turns where he like completely botched it. And I was like, bro, you were winning. You were beating him <laughs> and you just screwed it up. <laughs> oh man. I think nerves yeah. really do get to people, man. Uh, I, I do agree. That's why I tend to have some music playing in the background when I try playing regionals, because nerves will get to me as well. Yeah. For these uh, big events, do you usually, like, are they fatiguing for you, or do you kind of, like, um, you kind of have, like, a, a way to get comfortable and, and, and trudge through them? Thankfully, like, having just, like, water and being in the comfort of my own home is usually quite nice. But for in-person ones... I think in-person is a little nice for me just because if I'm going with all my friends from locals, 
after each game, we just kind of talk and just have a little bit of fun. So it kind of just lets the nerves die down. That's that's actually what I do. So what I do in in big in like uh, online events is I'll stream it normally. Like I'll stream if I get in on Easter, I'll I'll stream that one. But yeah. like I'll play my game after the game. I'll talk for like five minutes about like the game, and then I'll go like lay down so I can like kind of like recalibrate. But with the big events, I'll do the same thing you do with my friends. Like I'll like randomly find them or like I'll talk to like a couple subscribers that I just you know ran into, and we'll like chop it up and have some fun till the next round. Um, and that's usually pretty relaxing, but I see people like, just like sitting there, like, you know, <laughs> like face palming it, like looking down at the ground, really like honing in for the whole tournament. I don't know how people do that. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I personally, that my mentality is I can't do that. If I do that, I know I'll just start overthinking and making my own mistakes as well. Yeah. And, um, have you ever done like a big mistake? Like since you started like topping tournaments, have you ever done something you're like, I cannot fucking believe I did that. Like, have you? Is there a mistake that really haunts you to this day? Yeah, there's quite a few. They're very simple, minor mistakes. I have a tendency to swing first and play my units in case of triggers or whatnot. And I think it was one. I think it was round five. I swung five of the, my leader, seven dawn active. He took it to zero life, and I was like, "Well, my big mom's kind of useless now." <laughs> Oh my god, man. That's hilarious. I can't tell you how many times I've done that with Katakuri. Like, I'll I'll take a... Like, they'll swing five at me when they're at ten dawn. And, like, I have enough to, like, counter out of whatever they have. Or they only have one character on the board. This is before, like, Amaru, right? And I'll yeah. take it. And they'll be like, damn. <laughs> I was hoping you'd get it. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Do you have any... Yeah, uh, any huh? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Because I was about to close it out. Oh, yeah. There, there's quite a few mistakes that I've made. Like, obviously, I'm not perfect, and there will be a lot of mistakes I do make in big tournaments. But yeah, I, I think the seven drop one still kind of keeps in my head a lot. Was that the one where you got ninth at? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, dude, that's crazy. So that was the one loss I made. I had, and it cost me getting to ninth place. It seems. Jesus, dude, I'm so sorry. Well, <laughs> it, it was my own mistake. Yeah, I mean, you've got five other serial cards, so I think you should be all right with that. You probably made $30,000 <laughs> playing this game, so I think I think, Shit, I, I yeah. think you could uh, afford the, the ninth place instead of the eighth. Do you have yeah, any I final... I only have three serial shanks, though. I only have Two one. Two of them with treasure cups. Oh, I only have one. I'm definitely... I want to get I want to get another one soon. I want to get a place... I wanted to get a place out of the, uh, the queens, but I just wasn't able to get into many tournaments um to to get them but do you have any yeah. final remarks that you want to say before we get out of here so i have to actually go pretty soon uh just uh, like i'm trying to make up a new twitter and youtube and i appreciate anyone who's willing to follow and support shout it out what, what is it i'll put it in the description below obviously uh it'll be Tis disfire tcg disfire tcg you guys heard it first the <laughs> yellow goat the greatest yellow player of all time michael curry Thanks so much for having me, man. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. Peace.